Victoria Beal with the Ohio LTAP Center. Um, welcome to this morning's webinar on the GIS crash analysis tool, um, referred to as GCAT. Our presenter this morning is Mike McNeil from the ODOT Office of Safety. And as we get things started, there's just a couple of housekeeping items. Please note that I'm going to be muting your phone line as you join. This is because we want to cut down on any background noise. Um, during the presentation that Mike is going to make. You do have the opportunity to submit um, questions in the chat pod on your screen, and I'll read those off to Mike as the presentation's occurring when you submit them. At the end of the presentation, we will be opening the phone lines up for audio questions. So if you don't want to put your question in the chat pod, you can just hold it till the end. Um, but with that, we're going to go ahead and get things rolling. Mike, are you ready? Not hearing you on here, Mike, so you might want to, I can see your screen, but I think you're still muted. Check your phone line, Mike. I think you're still muted. Yep. Make sure I didn't mute you. Hold on. I'm not seeing a, an audio connection for you, Mike. You might want to hang up and dial back in. While Mike is doing that, um, I will tell you that in the chat pod, I have also placed a link to the um, upcoming in-person GCAT webinars. So if you're interested in attending in person, um, I would encourage you to take a look and see um, what date and location might be good for you to attend. We do still have plenty of seats available. Um, and the trainings run every other month through the end of the year, and we do move them all around the state. So hopefully you can find a, a present place that's um, close to you. So with that, I see that Mike is back in um, as far as the audio. We've got you green on the phone there. So I don't hear you yet, yet, Mike, though, so you might yes. want to check your phone. Okay, great. All right, okay. sorry about that. That's uh, all right. We're just going to go ahead and turn it over to you. Thanks. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Okay, can everyone see the full full screen PowerPoint there? Uh, Victoria? We can see your presenter's view, but that's fine. Just go ahead and go with it. Okay. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, again, my name is Mike McNeil with the uh, ODOT Highway Safety Program, and this morning we're going to cover a, just a one-hour webinar on the GI on GCAT, um, integrating it into the, the TIM system, which we've done uh, this past year, and uh, just kind of give, uh, you know, some information about the tool itself, and then and then work into the uh, Excel file and whatnot. Um, we'll we'll kind of move through things pretty, pretty quickly just to kind of inform you and, and give you, uh, you know, some good information about everything, um, and then at the end, uh, we'll we can uh, address questions and whatnot. Uh, so just to kind of show you the overview of today's training, um, I'll give you some GCAT information. Um, I have a slide here on in-class trainings for 2018. And then we'll walk through the, the crash data search layout for the new, la new layout within TIMS. And then we'll go through some example searches and whatnot. So as you can see here, th uh, th this is our GCAT website where we just have some supplemental information to the tool. Um, over in this box here, you can see on the on the left hand side um, diff different files. Uh, if, if you're looking to get GCAT access, we have a PDF in there for that, um, for both internals and externals to ODOT. And then we have the, the CAM tools listed here at the top and uh, so just some other files there and whatnot. And a link over here on the right-hand side in the red box, GCAT, which will take you to the, uh, the new TIMS website where you can log in. Uh, as far as future trainings, so th this is the first basically training for 2018, uh, this webinar. Uh, we do do in-class trainings. So if, so if someone's looking to get more in-depth uh, knowledge on GCAT, um, more kind of 
hands-on working with the query form and then the Excel file and whatnot, we we offer these five trainings listed on the screen here this year in uh, at our ODOT facilities around the state. So if you you know want, again want more uh, training information, um, those are typically like a nine to noon session. Uh, so we just get into more examples and different things, especially in the Excel file and whatnot, as far as more looking at the data analysis, that perspective. Uh, for this training today, we're going to kind of focus more on just the GCAT aspect within the TIMS uh, website. And then um, I'll basically just show you, show you how to import it into the CAM tool if you, if you haven't worked with that yet. Um, so again, those are the in-class trainings. And those are listed on our LTAP website. Uh, and you, that's where you can find more information on those. Uh, next, you can see here, the, this is the last slide before we kind of get into the TIMS program. But the, uh, what you can see here is the, the traffic crash report. So again, just kind of want to reiterate that this program, you know, in, in data analysis and, and crash data searches that we're looking to obtain from this program all revolves around the OH1 crash report and the, the information that's supplied on that report. So we try and have it set up so that, you know, if there's certain aspects on those, on the reports, different attributes and stuff like that, that, you know, you have the ability to search on that either within GCAT or we can eventually get the data for it within the CAM tool um, upon download and stuff like that. So that's kind of, again, just a, explain again that this program is pretty much mirrored after that. So I, I have this set up just to kind of go through uh, some slides here, and then, then I'll actually get in, when we do the examples, I'll get into the, the TIMS program. So you, you'll kind of see this stuff in live mode then. Um, but just for your own information, uh, when, when you want to run searches and stuff, I, I like to provide these slides here at the beginning so that it kind of gives you a background of what you can understand how, you know how to potentially use some of these functions and, and what it what it means and whatnot. So right here is the home screen for the the Tim's website, which is the Transportation Inf Information Mapping System. And in our tech services group does separate webinars for the items listed above there on the Tim's program. Um, obviously, the one today is what we're focusing on there in the bottom left corner, which is the crash data search button in the GCAT login button. So that's the home screen for it, and that's where you can log in for the for the website. And then when, when you click the GCAT login button, it takes you to this screen right here, which kind of gives you four options. Um, majority of the time, you're just going to go existing GCAT user and log right into the program. Um, if, if you need to get a GCAT user account, uh, if you're a new new user, you know, if you, you're looking to um, get access for another person, then you can click the new user button there at the bottom, uh, which just sends you to one of our the PDFs that t labels out exactly how to, you know, follow the instructions to get access for GCAT. The other one is, you know, forgot, forgot password um, if, for your myo.account. account. And then the last one we have is, uh, it says access public information. And so we we only offer GCAT up to um, like all government agencies, uh, law enforcement, consultants that work with us on safety analysis, uh, pretty much any anyone that's you know again looking to provide some sort of safety analysis or like look at you know specific locations um, from an improvement standpoint or, or that sort of thing. So it, again, this this isn't a website that's open for access to just the general public. So if, if someone of that nature did stumble upon this page, they can access general information there. Uh, with, and then on the public access page, it, it does show, um, you know, you can, you can still search crashes and it'll show them on the map, but uh, they don't get as much detailed information and crash report links and that, and that sort of thing. Um, the, the last thing I wanted to add it for this screen that you see here is that when you're going to log into GCAT, uh, you, you'll need to put the ODOT online um, 
backslash in front of your in front of your username. Um, so your myo dot account is just you know typically first initial last name, and then but this that note there above the login just wanted to reiterate that that needs to go in front of your your username um, when when logging into the website. So if you're having any issues, then that you can follow the text there. Uh, once you log into the program, uh, this is what you, the, the first page you come across, and it's the crash data search page. Uh, we refer to it as our query form. What we're looking to what we're looking to pull from the data. So here you can see the the five different uh, drop downs for items. And this is pretty much mirrored the same way that we had the old GCAT system set up uh, with these tabs. And I'm going to I'm going to walk through each one of these, um, and you can you know select things as you as you go forward and whatnot. I have these notes here at the bottom. As you can see here at the at the top, there's two buttons. When you're once you do have your query form filled out how you want it with you know year and attributes. There's a view and map option, and then there's a download option. And you know, you're not re really going to run into these issues, but I bring them up on here just so that if you are in one of the higher volume counties uh, downloading crash data, that you're you're just aware of the situation. Um, so the way we have this set up here is you you select what you want to search on, then we move to the map page on the next on the next screen. But in with that, you can see here that the view and map button, it will display uh, fil filtered crash events up to like 105,000. Uh, so if you wanted to do three years, basically three years of crash data in any county, you can, you can search that for a specific county and then move right into the map screen. Um, if you're trying to search like 10 years of data in Franklin County, Basically, it comes down to Franklin, Cuyahoga, and Hamilton. If you're looking to, you know, search crash data within those counties for more than three years, then you just have to kind of break it out. So you could do three years, download that data set in, in the CAM tool, and then the, and then the next three years and whatnot. But for all the other counties, you can do pretty much five to ten, and it doesn't hit that limit. Um, and that basically that shows the crashes on the map, hence the view and map button. The other button there is the download button. So if you say wanted to just download a whole data set for a specific county, you could come into the crash data search page, fill out your information that you want to retrieve, and then just directly hit the download button. Um, the reasoning behind that is, you know, if you just want like a whole county's worth of data, or you know a whole jurisdiction, say city or whatnot, you're not necessarily like maybe looking at the locate concerned about the locations right on the map. If you're looking to just get raw numbers or you know alcohol numbers or seatbelt numbers for that large area, then you can just directly download the data from this page and no need to go to the map. Uh, just working through the tabs now. Uh, the first one we have is the when occurred tab, and this just has a simple year and month on it. Uh, so we users can search uh, crash data back up to 10 years now. And so you can see in there, we do have the 2018 button activated in GCAT currently. And as we get crashes in each week, that that number of you know what's in the system will just keep, you know keep going up and whatnot. Um, crash data is on you know a li little bit of a lag, usually a couple months and whatnot. Um, but at any time you can search in 2018 and, and, and at least see, see what's in there if you're looking for a certain location or that sort. But then the previous 10 years, uh, that's all closed out data. So that should be 2017 is not official yet. Uh, agencies can submit till the end of March for 2017 data, and then that'll get finalized and, and, uh, be locked in, but so basically anything 2016 at this point uh, for the next two months. And then you can see the the month search there too. Moving to the moving to the next tab is the crash details, and this one is by, by crash type. 
Um, if, and again, a lot of these buttons are on here only if you, if you really want to search on it up front before you get to your data set. Uh, typically when I'm, when I'm running data sets, I, a lot of times I'll just enter in my years and the county that I'm, that I'm looking for, and then I'll go to the map and start to zoom into the location. That way it gives me all the data. Um, but depending on what your search is, you know, if you're looking at specifically pedestrians or whatnot, you can just come straight to the crash type and select pedestrian there. So at the top here, we have 19 different uh, crash types as, as we label them out here at ODOT. And then below that, there's five different crash severities. So, um, going from a, the lowest scale of PDO to the highest scale of a uh, fatal crash. And then at the bottom, we also have a document number search box. So if you have a crash report where you may know the document number and, and just through other sources and, and you want to view the report, uh, those can be manually entered right there and, um, and then they'll, they'll show up on the map. The third tab is the emphasis areas. And so this one just has all the different emphasis areas that we, tra that we track through our strategic highway safety plan here at ODOT. Um, but I know that a lot of our partners within that committee and safe communities and all kinds of uh, different agencies look for particular things. So if you if were to uh, come into the emphasis areas here and select on any of these, you know, that's all that's going to be in your data set. And so in some of these buttons, if you hover over it with your mouse, you know, it kind of, I put senior driver and younger driver on there because the, the text kind of cuts off. But if you were to just hover over any of these with your mouse, it'll show you the full name uh, within there. And so these are set up as these, these buttons on this tab are set up as ands. So if, if you were to uh, come in here and select motorcycle, motorcycle for your emphasis area and alcohol for your emphasis area, the results that you're going to get are only crashes where both a motorcycle and alcohol uh, were involved. So the more you select, the narrower your search will get um, as far as number of results. Um, but just want to kind of to point that out that they, it, it looks at it like an and statement. The fourth tab is the driver vehicle. And this, this kind of gets more into the detailed stuff. This is probably the least commonly used tab out of the five. Uh, but again, we like to provide this information for types of units, special functions. You know, if you're, this gets more into the actual crash details. As I pull these up here on the screen, you can see within each of these, how many codes are within the drop downs there. So again, all these are drop downs. And when you click in them, so type of unit, you'd have a choice of tw 28 different unit types you could select from straight from the crash report. Uh, so again, this gets more into the details, but contributing circumstances and sequence of events uh, gets more into like, you know, specific things if you're looking for hit, you know, certain fixed objects. I only want to see where they hit trees on this section of road, then, you know, that's where you can, you know, search on that and whatnot. And then the last tab is the query form tab, and it, which is focusing on location. So I have this highlighted at the bottom here. Because of the way that the, the functionality is set up for GCAT now, you'll have to enter in your years that you want to search on the very first tab, and then, and then any the county that you're looking in uh, for, for crash data. So it, again, that's as simple as a crash data search could be is year and county, and then you can move to the map if you want. But if you don't select that county in this tab, then it's going to look for all crashes in Ohio and at 300,000 crashes a year. Um, and you know, you're, you're searching for three years. It won't let, it'll give you an error and say, it won't, you know, that it's exceeded the max limit, but you know, that that's what it would be looking at. So by selecting county here, it really narrows it down. Or if you want to, the right below that is the ODPS city, village, township codes. And those are all on drop downs too. And, and so you can, you know, filter on a specific city, village, or township that you want. And then if you select one of those, there's, you don't need to select the county then. 
um, because you're you're narrowing your search down even more and if you only want a certain township then uh, there's no need to search the you know entire county and then the last function on that page is the NLF ID search and that stands for our network linear feature identifier but as you can see there in the screen if you were to click that little magnifying glass you get this NLF ID search to pop up and it kind of just walks you through it as you go down each of these drop downs so the first option there would be choose the county you're in okay and then choose the route all right if choose the county okay we're in Franklin County choose the route um, well as you oh I guess I'll go with the example there you can see on the screen so if we chose Belmont County the next question says choose route and then you can see you know if, if I want interstate 70 or interstate 470 it knows it knows all the counties uh, county roads, township roads, interstates, state routes, U.S. routes within that county. So it's kind of already, it's building this NLF ID for you as you just select the routes and, and whatnot that you want. And then the log points are, are the last step to that. So that, that pretty much wraps up the crash data search page. Again, that's just one page with those five different uh, drop downs uh, depending on how in depth you want to get your attributes narrowed down to. So moving forward, then if, if you you know take your crash data search into the map screen, this is what you'll you'll see here. It'll it'll plot out all those points by severity. You can see the five different severities here color coded and. There's only a few things we pretty much work off of. So this, this top blue toolbar on the left-hand side has some different features that I'll show you more when we do the examples, um, but it does have the legend over there. And then this, the bottom left box there in red um, shows point with the buffer of 250. And that's the box we go to to whether we wanna draw a circle at an intersection or a polygon for a you know, section of road. Uh, that's that's where those function. So again, once you get to the map page, everything's right there on the left hand side. And you, yeah, you don't really need to navigate off of anything further than that. So with, with the function of uh, the polygons and circles, these are kind of the main players on how, how we, we look at the, the segments of road or intersections. Uh, for corridors on the left hand side, you can, there's two options on how you can do it. It just comes down to preference. Uh, we have a, the option one would be a line with a buffer. And so you can just draw a straight line along that road. And then it automatically builds the buffer as you can see there in that, in that example photo. Or you can do polygon, which is, you know, each time you left click, it drops a point, just like how it used to be on the, our old GCAT system. And then moving to the right, same thing for intersections. Uh, we have that option one with a, a point with a buffer. So click the middle of the intersection and set your buffer to 250. It, that's the default. And it automatically builds the circle there for you. Um, or you can manually draw a circle to whatever size you want as, as an option two. And, and again, that's the same as old GCAT. So we wanted to kind of keep the same functionality as what we used to have and if for those of you that use the old GCAT system uh, but we also have these new line features that were already part of TIMS so we wanted to kind of work that into this system also and kind of expand it and just give users some options to however their their preferences are and then at the bottom there I just have when when drawing a shape um, you know it's, it's Pretty much the same way left click drops a point somewhere and then when you when you double left click it'll it'll lock that shape in and then you can move forward with your data search then once you have your boundary set up the the, the last thing is to just download the data set and i'll show you that in an example and then we uh work our way into the, into the CAM tool here with uh, in that top toolbar that I had uh, shown on the previous slide, that top blue toolbar at the top, on the far right 
icon. Looks like a little roadway. You click the drop down for that. There's the you'll see the the button. There's only three options there, but the cancel uh, Excel file is right there. So once you get to the end and you download your data set, and you want to import it into the Excel file. That's where that uh, drop down is to to obtain that file. And then once we open up the CAM tool, uh, same, same layout as, as what you've seen in the past. Uh, we're cu currently making some uh, uh, updates to it, but the functionality is basically still the same. Uh, you know, you can import your data set and then with the whole result of having automi automated uh, charts and graphs to go along with your data set. So uh, again, the whole, the whole goal of GCAT is you know, if, if you want to look at a certain location, whether it be an intersection or corridor, that you that the system set up so that you can log on to there, to, you know, pick pick your few attributes from the, the query form, move right into the map, you know, draw draw your shape, move, and then download the data set, move right into the CAM tool, and and then you know, just in a matter of minutes and whatnot, you have these charts and graphs set up for you know my intersection had 10 crashes or 20 crashes and these are the crash types and severity and that sort of thing um, so there there is has been a little bit of change in in the system since if if you may have not used it since last august or september but uh again that's our whole goal is to just still keep the functionality uh efficient and moving moving you through the process so that you're not uh, we like the idea of, you know, you're spending more of your time on the actual analysis of the data and the numbers you see and not trying to obtain that data. Mike, in that vein, there was a question that came through on the chat pod that Jeremy would like to know, is there a way to save the search parameters for use at a later date? Uh, th there isn't, not at this time. So if, if you set up, if you, if you draw boundaries on the map, um, there, there not it isn't currently a way to to save those boundaries. I guess I would say a wide range of our users, or a majority of the users, typically are just looking at one specific location, um, whether it, it be a segment of road or an intersection or maybe just a few intersections. Uh, but I, I I do know that a small percentage of the users like to get in and, and you know draw circles at say 10 to 15 intersections, but in in working in, into the new functionality of the TIMS program, currently uh, we're not able to save uh, shapes that have been drawn. That's the only question we've had so far. But as a reminder, if you do have questions while Mike's presenting, please feel free to put it in the chat pod. And then just a few last slides here. Um, importing the data set so we once we open the excel file we still click the open analysis toolbox on the left hand side here of the cam tool and then it's it's still the uh yellow button for the the import of the data set and here you can see in parentheses it says a csv file or an xls excel file and that import has just been set up based on how so it, this one CAM tool will read uh, both data sets. So back on the, in the query form on the very first uh, page, if you just hit down and say, I didn't need to go to the map, I'm just downloading my data set directly from the CAM tool. I think that gives you the, yeah, that gives you the CSV file. Or, you know, you move into the map and you draw your shape and run your, you run your query search and then it gives you a data set that comes out in the format of .xls. So the, the file has been set up so that no matter which way you download it, um, you know, it'll read both of them. And then here's just a screenshot of, yeah, the charts that get run through the data analysis. So when that second, second analyze data button is clicked there in, in the uh, toolbar, it generates the charts, which you can see there in the background. And then at the same time, while those charts are being updated, the graphs also get updated. OK, 
Okay, so this is the last slide I have on here. And it's the ODPS crash report website. Um, the way that we have the, the system set up now is we, we try and provide those crash report links throughout the process. So as I'll show you in an example, when I'm in the in the map view for the for GCAT here, we can obtain crash report links. And then the same with when you download your crash data into the CAM tool. So say you got 20 crashes, just as before, we provide those those links right on the left hand side of your spreadsheet so that you can you know quickly look through or pull up whatever crash reports you need to straight from there so we have the crash reports basically on a on a external website right now that so that they're hosted so that anyone that's using gcat can click those links and view the reports um, i provide this screenshot screenshot on here for the odps crash report website just as an additional reference uh, when if you're looking for a specific crash crash report i should say um th this is just a good one to keep in the back of your mind just because uh we might not get the data if, if you know it's a current 2018 crash we might not have the data depending on the agency for a period of time to get it into our system um, but for agencies that are submitting electronically and and i think 65 close to 70 percent of the crash reports in Ohio now are, are submitted electronically uh, those get loaded into the to the ODPS website pretty quick I've seen some on there the, the day of the crash uh, later in the day so you would just come in here and click county and crash date and uh, you, you know you might have to filter on how many how many are in there what you're looking at but it's a kind of a quick way to get a crash report sometimes or you can always come here and you know with the document number which I have the here shown in the red box search the document number and, and just another resource to get crash reports too so before you used to have to come to this website for anyone outside of ODOT to view the reports now we have those links set up in the cancel for everyone that has GCAT access uh, but I still you know use this website for for other things and obtaining information so uh, with that I'll go ahead and pull up Tim's here now and kind of just you know walk you through kind of just what I showed there on the PowerPoint but now that you have a little uh, understanding then uh, it'll be a little bit more familiar as we move through it Victoria, can you see my screen there fine? Sure can. Okay. Yeah. Um, so for anyone that hasn't been to the Tim's website, you can just come to the main ODOT homepage right here, scroll down a little bit, and on the left-hand side, under Maps and References, uh, it's the first link there, and you see the Tim's icon. So when we click that, it takes us to the Tim homepage. And then in the bottom left corner here again is the crash data search. And when I hover over it, you know, search crash data here for GCAT. So when I we click got that. A question for you, Mike. I'm sorry. Yep. It says, are, are the narratives available in the downloaded data for the reports? The narratives are not available in the in the downloaded data set. Uh, so if, if you if you have the data set in the CAM tool and you click you know you click the report link on the left hand side it'll pull up the image of the report which will show the narr narrative and diagram however we don't have the the narrative itself that is written out by the officer in like a data format with within the cam tool um, if anyone has you know a, speci a specific query that where they, they might be looking for something uh, that sort of thing they can just contact our office directly and we have ways of you know searching through narratives and things like that but uh, as far as the download goes uh, just only what you see on the report that answers it thanks okay okay so as you can see here uh, I just click the the login button on the first screen and then it it pops me to uh, this page here and I'm just going to go right here to the existing GCAT user button. 
and just click login. And when you do that, it'll probably ask for your credentials and whatnot. And that's where you'll just enter that ODOT online, the slash in front of your uh, username. But then you'll you'll end up on this page. Okay. So the first example I'm going to set up is is just a very simple one, uh, just showing how to download a basically a county worth of a county's uh, data set for for one year. So if I came into the when occurred tab. You can see our year and month here, and then when I select in the blue area, you get your drop downs for the year. I'm just going to select 2016, and these are all just set up so that it, you know when you click click them, they highlight. When you, un, when you click them again, they you know turn off. Um, so 2016 there, and then I'm going to come down to location, and for county, I'm just going to select Adams County. And then if, if you're ever curious as, as, if, as far as if anything's been selected within these, if you look over here to the right hand side, you can see these numbers associated with that the toolbar. So here I can see one, so I know something's been selected in that, within that um, attribute box, same with location. So say I just wanted to come in again, I selected 2016. Adams County, I just want to download all these crashes. You can click the download button right here, 595 results, and then in CSV format, and when you, you can hit download right here and it'll take it to, you know, you can download that CSV then to import into the, into the CAM tool. When you hit the, if I did the same thing, so again, you can see here we had 595 when I hit the download button. If I hit the view and map button, if I want to view all these crashes within Adams County, I get 569. So there's the discrepancy there in the 26 crashes between 569 and 595 is when when you just hit the download button, it's just we have the crash in the system based on document number and a lot of attributes with it but we might not have location information for that crash. So, but when you hit the download button, that's not looking at location. It's just saying, give me all the data for that county that we have as far as crashes go. Versus when we hit view and map, we have to have that location aspect of the crash uh, tied to it. So again, you can see the, the how many of them are in there, you know, 569 versus uh, 595. So it's it's just missing, you know, again, 26 crashes. But so th there's 26 crashes that either have like invalid lat longs or a lat long wasn't submitted, or we just can't locate it on our on our network. So that's kind of the difference between the two. So if we go to view and map, Kind of zooms into Adams County there, and then you can see the the crashes shown here. And then, so this is kind of the nice thing about having it in the TIM system now. If, you know, if we want to put in that county border, we can come over here to the again this top toolbar, far left side. We can set visible layers. And then all these features are already in the TIM system that they use for other functions. Uh, we just had them implemented as part of this process too. So under boundaries, we can select county, and then and then there you go. You can see how that boundary is set up. So that's just a quick example of you know downloading. Whether it be, I did a county in my example, but whether it's for a city, village, township, if you wanted your data set, uh, you could see how we have all the city, village, and townships loaded into here. And so, you know, once you start typing, it'll start to focus on whatever, whatever you're looking for. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and clear 
clear that out. N next, uh, I'm going to show one that is a uh, motorcycle crashes, uh, specifically looking at fatalities and serious injuries uh, for two separate counties. So I have this set up so that it kind of uh, pulls from pretty much each of the uh, tabs here so you can kind of see how it kind of all works together. Um, so first I'm going to again clear everything out, start with the when occurred. I'm just going to look at the last three years that we have of, of pretty much closed out data, so 2015, 16, and 17. Then I'm going to come down to the crash details here where I can do crash severity. And again, I want to look at anything that was a, a fatal crash or this incapacitating is the same thing as a serious injury, uh, just a different terminology for it. So there I have fatal and serious injury selected. And then the last thing I'm going to choose is down here in this, the emphasis areas just the one box that we can select. And in the, in the box here, I'm gonna go ahead and select motorcycle. So if I expand these out, you can see three years of data, fatal and serious injury uh, for motorcycle crashes. But I also added one, wanted to add two counties in. So again, if I come to the counties here, I'll select start and summit and then view and map. Uh, it gives me 206 results. And then you can see them there uh, plotted out with the red being the fatalities and the uh, purple icons being the, the serious injuries. So if I were to turn on my counties again, you can see them all then for, for Stark and Summit there. And so now I'm going to show you a little feature. If, you know, say, say you were looking for a specific crash within, and you knew where it occurred at within one of the, within this data set, um, say this, this uh, fatality that you can see right here on the screen that we're going to zoom in towards. Say you wanted to get the information for this, just this crash, uh, and, and see the crash report. Uh, we add this feature in there so that if you're just looking at like a single crash, or if you're just trying to get the report or information for it, that uh, you don't have to go through the CAM tool process and download it just for one crash. Um, so you can just get that information right from here. So in the, again, in the top toolbar, third icon in from the left is this identify features. And when I select that, it says, click the map to select features. So I'll just kind of put my crosshairs right over top of that uh, dot. And then, uh, let me see if it turns off. Mike, while you're working on that, there is a question that came in the chat pod. Um, they wanted to know, can you show how to search a single road using NLFID search? Yes. Okay. And there was a second question. Um, how can we report a completely wrong location? So if, if you're looking in the, if you have a, a, a data set for within your CAM tool and, and you pull up a crash report and it's the location's totally wrong in there, um, basically if you just give us like the lat long, you, you can actually go in the CAM tool then and and over to the uh, it's probably best if I show you an example, but if you were to scroll on the on the crash data tab in the in the CAM tool, if you scroll out to the right, just keep scrolling and, and you'll eventually come across columns that say uh, the lat long and you can just you know update the lat long in there to to wherever the crash should be located and then uh, just highlight that information or on the far left of the the tab just highlight like the the document number so that we know something in that row is updated and then we take those hand logs here at, at the office and and make sure that those get um, put back in so that's that's why for those 
in that first example I showed you the Adams County where it was if you just downloaded the data set you'd have 595 crashes if you if you wanted to as far as location aspects we only have it for well majority of them but 569 so if there was a county that wanted to look at okay those 26 crashes we have uh, I want to get those lo locations updated or you know correct locations so then they could they could still download that into the cam tool and they're going to have 26 crashes with blank lat longs and then based on you know what the report says or the narrative and diagram they can figure out where it occurred at then same process you can put the lat long in the cam tool uh, just highlight that it does however you want to do it highlight the row highlight the document number um, and then you can just email that file to our office and we take those hand logs and I think we, we pretty much get them updated quarterly in the system then. Um, back to this example on the screen. So if you, if you knew of where one of these specific crashes occurred and you wanted to get information on just that, again, I came here to the top toolbar and there's the identify features button third from the left. Uh, so when I selected that, you just come over here to the map then, click over top the crash point, and while it loads it there, and then over here on the left-hand side, it gives you information for that crash, a lot of the information that you'd see in the cam tool if you downloaded it anyways. But this makes it convenient if you're just, again, like looking at one or two crashes. So starting at the top here, it gives you the document number, um, and then we do have the crash report links active in there. So as I pull that up, you can see that crash report right there. There's another question that's come into the chat pod. It says, on the map, how do you see the results at the bottom of the page? It looks like you can see the data in a list there. Yes, um, I'll, sh I'll show you that in here in just, just a second. Uh, so, again, th this just shows information here on the left-hand side uh, for, for the crash. Well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, moving on to what Victoria just mentioned, if, if we wanted to search, you know, at the, at the bottom to, to, for several crashes, say these, these three crashes right here, we want to download into the CAM tool. So I'm going to work in here from this little roadway icon. We do filter crash events by graphic, and that puts us to this page or this little screen here where we can draw our shape. So that, to answer that question, to get the results at the bottom, even though there's even though the the icons are showing up on the screen, this is just the way that the functionality is set up for the program, you you pretty much still have to come in and just draw a shape. So if, so if I draw a point. Um, let's say, let's just say, I know I want these three crashes and that, and that's it. So I'll just do a, a, a polygon and draw. And I get those three. Then I hit the search button. So e e again, th and this kind of encompasses everything. So when you come to the view and map page, even if, even though it shows the results on the screen, for the most part in GCAT, the reason you're coming to the map page is because you want to zoom into that specific intersection or corridor uh, for the analysis. So it, when you download it or when you select a county and that moves you into the, in the view and map page, you know, it's going to show crashes for that entire county, kind of like it did the Adams County at the beginning. Well, I'm not, basically I'm looking to just, you know, pull crashes for a specific intersection at Adams County. So you can pretty much ignore that all those results showed up. Just go ahead and zoom right into your location and then do what I just did here where you draw a shape then around your intersection corridor. Uh, and then once you do that, then you hit search. That's when it, and you'll know too, because it says three results, it'll show you the results at the bottom. And then your icons will also turn teal. As you can see here, they're now that they're you know different color coded than like this serious injury off to the right over here. So once you draw that shape, it knows that it's only looking within that shape. Um, because again, if 
if if I wanted if I searched crashes in Adams County and and moved to the map, if I'm not looking at a specific intersection or corridor, but I want I just want all the crashes, that's why we have that download button on the very first in the query form page, so you can just download them all from there and no need to go to the map. The whole again the whole purpose for the map is to zoom into that specific location. So once you do, uh, again it's just it's through these functions here, uh, polygon and circle. And so now that I've showed you the the identified features for just looking at one or two crashes, I'm just the two examples I have left here are uh, uh, the circle and polygon, which are just you know the most probably the most commonly used for the program. While you're pulling that next example up, there's another question that came in the chat pod. Can you search by agency that was named as being involved? Say if somebody wanted to search all Central Ohio Transit Authority crashes in Franklin County. Not to my knowledge, no. Um, that that information would be like under the driver vehicle. Uh, th there's certain fields in the driver vehicle attributes that we we at ODOT really actually have redacted because we just don't use or need that information. And it comes down to I guess personal information. Um, so like all the names and addresses and that that sort of thing. If if ODPS puts it on their website and it's then a lot of times it's mirrored out off of that. But um, there's some here that are generated at ODOT that we don't put that information on there. So I think if if it was a specific like company or agency where their vehicle might have been involved in the crash, uh, we could start to narrow it down as best we could as far as like looking at, you know, buses in, in like central Ohio, so filtering on unit type and then location or, or gen, gen, general locations, you know, within a city or whatnot. Uh, but that's probably about as best we could do. Um, I wouldn't be able to, yeah, search on any anything more specific as far as like a specific okay. county or company vehicles involved. Thanks. We've only got about eight minutes left, so we'll go ahead and let you finish up. And then um, any further questions that come up, we can send out responses to those separately. Yep, sounds good. Okay, so the last example I'm going to show here is just, again, the circle and polygon. Um, I'll clear out everything, so we're starting uh, from fresh here on the crash data search page. Again, I'm just going to be looking at three years of data, 2015, 16, 17. And I'm going to be looking at a just a specific intersection uh, here in Madison County. And then I view and map. So it gives me, you know, 2,900 results. To me, that, you know, doesn't necessarily, you know, matter. It's just part of the process of moving through it. So there we can see all the crashes in Madison County. Start to zoom into my location. Okay. So this is where I, I'm like, okay, I just want to search this intersection uh, for Madison County for those three years. So I've already got all that information entered. I'm just going to do po point here, which is the default, and then 250 as the buffer. I'm just going to hit select draw. Click there at the intersection, and you can see it draws my buffer, and then I'm going to hit search. And so whereas we started this on this view and map screen with 2,900 results for Madison County, I zoomed into my location, just drew the buffer around the intersection. And then that, you know, it's only showing two crash points here. Uh, just keep in mind that when the dots aren't necessarily uh, accurate in the sense to count off those, because a lot of these, especially at intersections, a lot of these crashes have, in our minds, this we pin them to the center of the intersection. So it'll have like the same uh, route identifier with the same log point. So there's actually all the points there, even though it looks like two. Just know that when it, 
when you're searching that intersection, it's going to give you the data within it. I mean, because at the bottom there, you can see uh, we have 11 results. So 11 crashes at this intersection for those past three years. And then to, to move forward with that, just with a polygon example to, to keep building off it, say I wanted to search this corridor of road here on 29, then down to this Snyder Lane. So this little section right here, I can change my point to a polygon. And then again, just select draw. Anytime I left click, it drops a point. And then when I want to complete my shape, I double left click. And there you can see the shape. And then same thing, I'll hit search again so that it knows to update my search based on my new, new boundary. So those icons will turn teal just like the ones at the intersection and it'll update the crash number. So since I have these both shown on the screen, anytime you have two shapes drawn on the map like that, it looks at them both combined. Uh, so, so we went from 11 just at the intersection. Now we included this stretch of road and we're up to 19 crashes. So uh, you could see there the how a circle functions, how the polygons built, and then you, the, the results that you have there with those. And then to, to, if I want to just download these 19 crashes, export data here in the bottom right corner of the screen right below the Esri icon, and then I hit to Excel. And then you just have to click it one more time. It'll say, it'll turn green, it'll say download. Then you hit that, and then you can see here at the bottom of my screen, it's, it's a, you know, it, it comes up in an in a Excel file, but like, as you can see here, but again, treat this as like a text file on the way the old GCAT was set up. Uh, just know that that's the file that you need to import it into the, the cancel then. And the way that's done, it, when you open up the cam tool, is that analysis toolbox and then the yellow button right here the in the tim's gcat import when you click that it'll say okay where's that file you want to import that's the X, the xls file we just downloaded from from the map that one so that's that's pretty much the uh, procedure uh, i think i got a few minutes left so i'll cover that question really quick about the search in the NLF ID for a section of road. I'm just going to go back back here and clear everything out. Okay, so I come in and again, you always have to select the year just so the system know it has something to build off of what you're actually looking for. So I'll just come in and select 2017. And then if I come down into the location tab, hit this NLF ID search. And it just kind of walks you through it. So the old GCAT, you had to build your own LFID, which if, if outside of ODOT, you know, is kind of kind of difficult to understand the terminology of it. Now, as you walks you through this, it builds it for you. So we'll select Ashland as the county, and then it has all the you know roadways that we have on our roadway inventory within there. Um, so say we want State Route 39 in Ashland County, and then even here at the bottom, it gives you uh, minimum values and max values. So there's no log point on State Route 39 that's over 9.89, um, just so it kind of keeps you within those limits. Um, there's something else, I, it's referred to as our desk tape. If you were to just go to the ODOT homepage and type in the desk tape in the top right search box, you can, uh, it has, these labeled out for each county. So if you came into uh, Ashland County and clicked state route and, and, and looked at the printout for State Route 39, you'd be able to see what the, the limits from zero to 9.89 and any roads at that intersects during that time frame. So it can it can help you build those log points versus you just kind of guessing. Um, but if I just you know knew it was from log point two to log point three, I could hit add section. It has that section built right there. And then that's actually all I need to go ahead with my search. I don't need to do the county and everything because it's 
it's pinpointed on this this NLF ID right now. And you can build up to five of them right there. So if I hit view and map for this, it's just going to give me uh, crashes for 2017, Ashland State Route 39 within that one mile log range, and it's giving me uh, two results. I know we're running over just a few minutes, but please hang on and we'll make sure that um, we get things wrapped up here for you. Okay, so there, there it shows just the two crash points. And again, if you wanted to download these into the CAM tool, just know that you want those two points and then you hit search once you draw, your, draw a shape around it. And it's not going to pull in, pull in anything else because that's all that you're, you know, that you have on the screen active anyways. So there's your two entries, and you can move forward with that into the download for the CAM tool. Uh, so again, th this just kind of covered the functionality of GCAT with the query form, crash data search page, and then the functionality of the map here. Uh, if anyone's interested in taking any of those trainings, those in-class trainings, we get more in depth for like the the actual Excel file and and you know, different ways to sort and filter and look at more of the data analysis aspect of that on top of kind of what you just saw here. So, um, you know, there's the registration form for those online, but uh, thanks again for uh, attending today. Yep, we appreciate it. I did put a link to the registration for the in-person GCAT trainings in the chat pod, so if you're interested, that'll be in there. We appreciate all your time. If you have any further questions, I've also put Mike's email address in that chat pod. And please look for future webinars, not only on GCAT, but on the TIM system and other subjects. Thanks for your time this morning. Everyone have a good day. Thanks. Thanks. Very nice to